<laughs> but yeah, it was ugly. And so that wrestler put 20 more years on him. And you'd like to give him a title now? Oh, no, 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 no. Here's my again. Fun. Yeah, we talk about like Taker. This this is another 50 year old who should not be. Yeah, he's good for three minutes tops. Yeah. Here's my final thought on Goldberg, and then we'll move on to the rest of Royal Rumble. Thank God we're through the skull sunglasses phase of Goldberg, and that's dead and gone. <laughs> that's all that I, he, make. That's all that I wore, care about. He looks so wore those, stupid. He wore those in that like interview thing for the Monday Night Wars thing, and I'm just like, oh, I remember those. Oh, uh, God. God. Yeah. All right. Uh, quick hits from the Royal Rumble. Charlotte retained... <laughs> The WWE Raw Wins Championship. I was as happy. She, as yeah, she should as, have. Yeah, she should have. Um, that natural selection on the apron, my God. Oh, God, yeah, that was good. Uh, and, na- oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, I mean, that that's that's the outcome that I was looking for. I mean, yeah. it's she, should have, she shouldn't have had that much of a problem with Bailey, and she didn't. Yep. Uh, Neville becomes the cruiserweight champ in the worst match of the night. Uh, why why cruiserweights no get over? Why 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 cruiserweights rest hold? Why cruiserweights chin lock? Because Neville forgot how to wrestle like a cruiserweight. He he's not. I don't think it's that at all. I think it's their book to do this. Yeah, and it drives me freaking batshit crazy, dude. Because 205 it's, Live is the same way. Any of the matches on Raw, they have it the same way. They're not wrestling a cruiserweight style. They're wrestling WWE style. And that's never going to get them over. Well, it's it's what they've done with cruiserweights through, you know, throughout the years. I mean, I'll go back to the ancient times of the Attitude Era Ooh. when WWE, F, whatever, uh, went... <laughs> And saw that WCW is getting all these cruiserweights, and they're just like, "We need a cruiserweight too." God damn it, I have to have some. Who's this Sasuke guy? And they went out and they got great Sasuke because Sasuke was like J Crown and all that. I mean, he was one of, if not the best, uh, cruiserweight in Japan at the time. So they went and they got him, and they signed him to a contract, or. They were about to sign him to a contract. I think how the deal was. They had him lined up for a contract, and they brought him in uh, to wrestle on a pay per view as kind of like his like big pay per view debut type thing. They brought him in. It was Canadian Stampede, and they needed him to fight somebody. So they went and they took the guy that he had wrestled with a lot and ECW and that type of thing. Uh, Takami Shinoku and they went and they brought out Taka and Taka came in there and Sasuke came out and Taka had all the personality and people dug him and they didn't give a shit about Sasuke and they're like oh but they had this great match so they ended up not signing Sasuke and they signed Takami Shinoku and then yeah then they realized wait we don't have any other cruiserweights to actually do anything with Taka. So they brought in the rest of Kai and Tai, and they're like, oh, that's great. We'll have Kai and Tai feud with Taka. And it's like, all right, well, that's three against one. That doesn't really make any sense. And yeah. then they went, all right, well, we'll put the four of them together. Okay, well, that doesn't make any sense. We'll feud them with Val Venus, and we'll do Choppy Choppy your pee pee. And yeah. <laughs> so that was a whole thing. But yeah, yeah that, that was the thing. They, they get the product, and they have the matches that gets everybody excited then they go okay well here's the script that you're supposed to follow and it dies a slow death at this rate that's what's going to happen unless somebody finally turns around and and i don't know what it's going to take for them to not wrestle that style is it going to take getting 205 live the hell off of a smackdown show and like putting it in orlando at full sail Maybe. I mean, I think that's what they have to do. I mean, that's what got the Cruiserweight Classic over. It allowed them to do that. If they've got the same road agents there or whatever that's telling them what to do at NXT shows, I mean, that's that's what they're, I think, going to have to do. Right. Uh, Nia Jax murdered Sasha. I had that yeah. one wrong. 
I called that wrong, but I'm not surprised, and I'm okay with this decision. And I see the direction it's going in, and it's... it's yeah, we're going to get that sweet heel turn. Yeah, and then there's going to be absolutely no faces except Bailey on the Raw roster. Sweet. Uh, Club won the Raw Tag Championships, and that was too sweet. We kind of saw that one coming, or at least I did. Um, it was time. Yeah. I mean, they kind of made him look like jokes for like the last, uh, what, 10 months or so. So Yeah. Uh, with, with belts, I think they'll just be stronger, and yep, hopefully. For sure. Uh, Nikki, Becky, and Naomi defeated uh, Alexa and Mickey James and Natalia. Woo. That's my entire comment. I have nothing to say. There were six women that wrestled in a professional wrestling match. That was, that Na- was cool. Na- Naomi, Naomi pinned, won. Naomi pinned Alexa Bliss. That was the the thing. And she's got a title shot at Elimination Chamber now. So, Sure, why not? Uh, and then the most shocking news from the Royal Rumble, uh, Enzo apparently tried to fuck a bucket of KFC chicken strips. But they were golden. That was the weirdest shit, dude. I'm sorry. I don't know what, what the hell were they thinking? pictures KFC has on Vince McMahon, <laughs> but between that and the Miz in a chicken suit fighting Colonel Sanders, um, Dolph Ziggler, yeah, Colonel Colonel Ziggler, it's yeah, yeah. If you haven't if you haven't seen the Enzo weird in love with the chicken strips to a sexual degree commercial, uh, seek it out and find it and join. Join the disturbed part of the WWE universe. And then throw salt in your eyes. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's time for our new segment because we're winding down since we've gone like 50 minutes already. Jesus. Yeah, we uh, knew that would happen. <laughs> there, uh, there'd be a sound bite going right now for our 10 count segment, though, right? Yeah, we're going to get that. We're going to get that. If you have a submission for to tag this segment, uh, email it to teetersneverpin at gmail.com thanks uh, this is the 10 count this is where we go through 10 things uh, you might have missed during the week or 10 things we really didn't feel like we could fit anywhere else on the show uh, and we're going to spend 10 seconds on each of them <laughs> I didn't tell you that part so it's going to be like that pardon your uh, PTI type thing and... yep oh, god damn it now, now I feel like I stole some shit from ESP and I feel dirty Oh, they stole it from someone else. Yeah, so it probably. makes you feel any better. All right, here we go. Uh, also, f- fuck Michael Wilbon. <laughs> oh, Jesus! But we need friends. We need friends. If we're gonna, if we're gonna take Rosenberg's damn job, since he's gonna apparently go work for WWE, Tom, don't say fuck Wilbon. Uh, oh, okay. Well. <laughs> All right, here we go. You can edit that out later. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Great. Uh, here we go. Uh. Lucha Underground Seasons 1 and 2 will be available on Netflix uh, starting the day after Valentine's Day, February 15th. Uh, if you haven't watched it, those are the two good seasons. You should watch them. It's it's ideal, too, for binge watching. I mean, yes. just, it's it's something, too, that, like, I don't know how El Rey comes out for anybody else, but it's just very oddly, like, proportioned. I try to, like, put the right perspective on it or not i don't know if it'll look better on netflix but i mean it's netflix is going to be ideal for them and i think it's going to pick them up one or yeah you know, a, a decent amount of interest yep seasons one and two or seasons one and two are great season three totally fucking lost me and i have not watched it since and uh if there are children in the room when you get to the ultima lucha and you see the the oh god that's a spoiler fuck it it's been over a year uh if you when you get to the vampiro uh pentagon junior match uh take the children out of the room oh no they need to learn <laughs> that, uh, that my children were watching at the time they're just like wow this is cool so <laughs> yep uh tonight as we record or last night as you probably listen to this the uh xfl documentary this was the xfl it's an espn 30 for 30 uh has premiered uh and we have a former xfl season ticket holder on the line to talk about the xfl tom I was going to say, I am contractually obligated to say, as a former XFL season ticket holder for the New York, New Jersey Hitmen, I sat in February, March, when it's possibly the worst weather ever in New Jersey, where it would rain and be about 40 degrees. So 
it wasn't cold enough to snow, but it was just cold enough to freeze. Fabulous. And I watched a team that averaged about 11 points a game play a vague resemblance to professional football. I thought that the concept was great. I thought that having a spring league would have been ideal. I think had had this not happened during the attitude era and caused Vince to attitude up the XFL that it may have ended up working as kind of a feeder league, but yeah, we know what happened. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Roode won the NXT championship off of Shinsuke Nakamura at takeover the night before Royal Rumble. Uh, I was surprised. Uh, and they ran a Shinsuke injury angle out of it, which is interesting. Which I, yeah, it just kind of got people talking going, Oh, maybe, maybe Shinsuke is going to be at the number third. No, he's not. It's going to be Roman and you're going to be pissed. Yep. Uh, also changing hands at NXT were the tag team champions. Uh, the authors of pain with Paul Ellering. Uh, are the new champs good i'm fine with this yeah i i mean it they diy got a actually halfway decent match out of them because they're green as hell still but um i don't know again putting belts on it's it's kind of like the oscar thing and putting the belts on the, the like the almost unstoppable dominant force i don't know how well that works you kind of have to build that for a while and they just kind of came out of nowhere and crush diy and now where do we go with it diy is way better on the chase they'll get him back at mania um final bit of nxt in the 10 count uh cory graves uh announced that he is uh done with nxt as of takeover and they had a really nice video package about him on uh tv wednesday night and it was great so thank you cory for your nxt work um you're the best announcer in the company absolutely um I didn't. I wasn't really watching NXT like early on, so I didn't get to see Corey really as a in-ring wrestler. And um, it seems like it's a little bit disappointing that his actual in-ring career didn't work out. But to be honest, this is going to advance his career so much longer. I mean, because he could have easily ended up getting called up to the main roster and gotten lost, and God knows what happened to him. But at this rate, he's never going to leave WWE. Yep. Uh, number six on the 10 count, Jim Ross's autobiography finally has a release date. It'll be October 2nd. I'm really excited to read that. It sounds like fun. It will be full of stories. I cannot wait to read that. Uh, the last autobiography I read was Gary Hart's, which is highly recommended if you can find it, uh, because it is out of print and I got it through means, which I won't necessarily talk about on this podcast, but, um, (laughs) It's, I mean, Jim Ross can tell a story and a half, and he's been through so much. I mean, I forget how long he's been around, like, just through UWF and through um, WCW and Crockett and, you know, earlier than that, Mid-South and all that type of thing. He's just been, like, everywhere, and you know the man's got 8 million stories. That book's going to be so thick. Yep. Uh New Japan's next big show, The New Beginning in Sapporo, uh, is February 5th at 4.30 a.m. Eastern uh, with the main event of uh, Kazuchika Okada versus uh, Minori Suzuki for the title. Oh, God, yes. Suzuki guns back, baby. We'll get to see it rain again with the Rainmaker. Um, we were discussing that finisher, I think, and how Put. it's necessarily yeah i i i love it i put the I belt on suzuki do. put the belt on suzuki put the belt on suzuki have somebody chase yeah i can see that happening yep uh numbers eight and nine are both self-indulgent for myself uh in british wrestling uh uh flash morgan webster and mark haskins have returned to progress uh at the last chapter that he taped on sunday tropic thunder bastard hell yeah Haskins is coming back for his title and Webster's back, which is really fucking exciting. Comment, Tom. Get as many people as you can on there so that when this stuff eventually shows up on WWE Network, I can follow it all. <laughs> there you go. Uh, also, uh, and they had it on for free on Facebook, and it's free on demand progress right now. Uh, progress has started their own kind of developmental show uh, from the Projo with some of those talents. It's called Freedom's Road. The first episode's available on demand-progress.com for free right now. And they had it on Facebook last week. Uh, watch it. It was really good. 
And if you want 30 minutes of free wrestling with story.